have a problem. And that problem is that my brain fails to recognize the simple chemical differences between a World of Warcraft subscription and literal crystal meth. Gladiators, those soon to be, and you. Let me ask you something. You ever been trained? Huh? Blizzard Entertainment's got me trained like one of Pavlov's dogs, because every time I even hear the words world or war or craft, I have an overwhelming desire to stay up for three days and three nights to chase the dragon, which I'm not even sure is real anymore. That is to say that I've been chasing the dragon given to only the top percent of PvPers for a long time. But that story comes with a dark secret and an unexpected twist. If you browsed the World of PvP subreddit at all on your way in, you'd be convinced that Dragonflight Season 3 is currently dying and unplayable. That's because as recognizable as the name World of Warcraft is, the game doesn't seem to be bringing in any new players. It actually seems barely able to retain players for full seasons at a time, especially the PvP scene, which is kind of fair, because to someone who knows nothing about video games, this Oh no, no, oh no, 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 And all of a sudden, I've been cut down to size. He's got a fighting chance here. It should have never been. A huge blunder on the side of Vitality has brought them into a- No! is way easier to understand and appreciate than this. It can't get closer than this time I am with the precog right now. Gets the cyclone onto Riker Trill. Once again, recovering both of these healers, working on Fume, Sidu, and Lontar. What a matchup right now. Sam I am in the sun, Riker's in the sun. Who's gonna fall? There's no darkness, there's nothing. The hunt comes in. The spirit gets dropped. Sam I am. Echo, which is going to be the But that's just the outside view. There are many more issues here internally. The main gripe from players that enjoy the game is that they have to sit in 45 minute queues just to get into one game of solo shuffle. Of course, if they just would group up with one or two other gamers manually, then they could get regular arena games nearly instantly. But it can be difficult if you're gatekept from continuing in groups or even from joining groups at all without relevant experience and gear. Experience and gear that you can't obtain because almost no one wants to play with new players. And it's extra annoying when every single other game with a rated queue system lets you queue up by yourself and gives you a team automatically. But as relevant as that struggle is, I think I found the solution, and it's not what you think. Zugga, 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 zugga. I am 100% zugga. One faithful day in early February 2024, two of my best friends said something to me that I'll never forget. Keep in mind, these two are familiar with WoW and have even played it in the past, but neither really played WoW and escaped the noob phase, you know? Not deep into any endgame content. And it's been years. I thought neither of them would ever want to reinvest themselves into such an intense game with an insanely high skill ceiling as WoW ever again. But then he said it. That son of a bitch, he said it. They messaged me the words, hey, we're thinking about trying WoW again sometime before the end of the month. In that moment, my inner wild crack goblin relapsed, which ascended me into a higher realm of thinking and clarity. And it was there I could see the future. All right, I finally did it. It may have taken all of my free time over the last three weeks, but now we finally have full conquest gear from weekly quests and battlegrounds. Finally, it's time to start crushing the competition like they did to us when we were at the bottom of the ladder. All right, now how do I get in go here? Oh, okay, okay. I got my buttons over here. I got my buttons over here. I got my buttons over here. I knew what I had to do. In my 18 years of playing this game, never ever, not even once, have any of my characters been a healer. Nor have I ever leveled a druid. For I am... Yeah. DPS till I die, no I do it right, I make the bread and get the bag, yeah, no I keep it tight, no I ain't locking heels, I say damn it's on side, but my boys won't do it, skirms won't pay, so if it's do or die, I'd rather try and say, that's pretty gay. And thus, my alter ego was born. For the sake of hooking my friends on the same digital drug that has siphoned at least $15 a month from me for the last two decades, I became a shadow of my former self. 
the epitome of everything I once stood against. Ikats Luos, Night Elf Druid, famed hero of the Alliance. Enters the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm dropping racks to play games older than me. Motherfuckers say it's dead, but they're not elite. Like four scores old, but still feeling pristine. They just can't keep up. Call it ADHD. I'll be popping off, smacking jaws until the ops make me drop. I'll never stop confusing my. Let me tell you something. Retail WoW has never been more casual friendly. Does it have more barriers to entry than some other games? Sure, but how complicated does this really look to you? Oh, sorry. Uh, that was footage from my first Druid dungeon where I only have to press Rejuve once every few minutes. Uh, let's see what healing later on is like. Job's done. Yeah, before new players can get to the quote unquote end game, they have to play through what is essentially a 10 hour long tutorial. This is part of that tutorial. This might look simple, but this is the gameplay that terrifies 95% of WoW players. This is healing. And the reason that it scares so many people isn't because it's underwhelming. All leveling is underwhelming in retail. It's because this is just a building block towards this. Which, as complicated as it looks, isn't that crazy difficult either. But it was here, in my very first dungeon, that I learned what they had warned me about. What I witnessed that day would forever foreshadow all of the events that would follow. Wow, this is really easy. If I just click my button, everybody lives. I don't know what everyone was always complaining about. At level 10, young Ikatsluos had experienced what is undoubtedly the most difficult thing you will ever have to deal with as a healer. And it's that shockingly, sometimes your teammates just don't want to be healed. No matter how easy it may be to drop a totem or to keep a hot up, you can never underestimate your own teammates. But fortunately, I was leveling with two of my buddies, so I only really had to worry about two people. But I would not have them to protect me from the horrors of anonymous internet strangers for long. For as time went on, these continuing events were slowly shaping the monster that I would become. But these are low-level dungeons we're talking about. Surely someone can be forgiven for going AFK real quick mid-boss fight or standing in the fire for a while not paying attention. But don't worry, I assure you, this does not change for the entirety of the healing experience. And after rinse and repeating that cycle for several hours, we had finally completed the tutorial. And after everything, leveling 1 to 69, nice. I can easily say that healing was way easier to level with. All I had to do was keep health bars full and pay attention to where I was standing. Hmm. I, uh, I wonder if it's going to be any easier in PvP. I don't know why you're rolling a priest. There's no damage command to stop me. You are look like a waste time in PvP. No. Now I'm a PvP into your PvP. And that's how I found myself here. My friends promptly started putting less time into the game as soon as we were in position to start pushing for raiding in 3v3s. And I'm left with the same problem that most gamers have. I need friends to properly appreciate this game. And the best way to attract players that will actually want to play the game and push is simple. It's a little trick of the oldest profession in the world of Warcraft. What's the one thing that every WoW player wants more than anything else? It's a healer. See, my friends, they already won. They got fun out of the game for moderate time investment, and every now and then they get to return casually and have more fun in the arena with their bros on a five second queue because I chose to play healer for them. And it's actually a lot more enjoyable than I thought it'd be. Because of this, they will never have to deal with the horrors of long solo shuffle queues. So good for them, right? But what does that have to do with the regular solo shuffle queues that you have to deal with? Well, we can't expect Blizzard to figure out that this is not at all what the community meant when they asked for a solo queue system, and they're never going to add incentives to play with new or lower experienced players, so as a casual DPS player without a friends list full of multi-glads from years of gameplay experience, what do you do? 
Well, the way I see it, you have two options to fill that friends list and begin your climb the gladiator if just playing DPS the way you do isn't cutting it out for you. Option one would be temporarily rolling a healer. Now, wait, 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 wait. Healing is not what you think it is. I've ignorantly believed in its many misconceptions for many years, but after finally trying it out, you have to believe me when I say that healing is a hack for PvP and its pros far outweigh the cons in the current healer drought environment. Look at this. Healing specs are varied enough that each one attracts completely different types of players. There's Resto Druid for players who just want to throw up their hots and call it a day. There's Resto Shaman for players who just want to throw down their totems and call it a day. There's Mist Weaver for players who just want to DPS, but they play healer anyways. And there's Evoker for players coming from MOBAs. And then there are Priests for women. If you're a healer in endgame PvP, you hold all the power. And if all else fails, you can enact the ultimate heavenly cheat code that's only accessible to healers. Now, please don't underestimate the power that this gives to healers. Since there are so few healers, DPS are desperate to get anyone to heal. So much so that in the twos ladder, you'll see double DPS queuing all the way up to 1800, just because nobody wants to play solo shuffle. That means you get to pick only the highest CR players to form your groups and then climb the ladder with ease without ever having to actually risk losing CR. And I found you can usually pull this strategy all the way up until at least 1800 and at most potentially all the way up to glad, although maybe not in a season deflated as this one. Healing also teaches you positioning better than any other specs in my opinion and makes you a better DPS player in that regard than actually playing a DPS. Or it at least teaches you something important that is difficult to fully perceive from the DPS side of things. That's because you get to take a step back and see the fight from a different perspective, which should be encouraged for anyone to do in a subject they're trying to improve in, right? You can't perfect your team synergy if you haven't tried each role. That's especially true for positioning if your DPS of choice is a caster. But this is also important for Melee to understand how to enable their healers to help them most. Solo Shuffle in particular is so desperate for healers that they give out participation bind on account conquest tokens that you can send to ults and 25% increase conquest gains. This plus the loot boxes for 375 conquest points effectively make one session of healer gameplay and shuffles and or arenas enough to almost completely kit out any other ult you might have. So in summary, Temporarily rolling a healer will give you free CR, CR loss protection, free CP, free con holy shit, I can't say that. Free conquest points, free groups, instant games with the boys, instant queue times and solo shuffle, optimal teammate selection and LFG, makes you better at the game on all classes, passively gears your ults and full purples, makes your penis bigger, a greatly expanded friends list, improves the PvP community by shortening all queues. It seems like holding back on the zugzugging now and then can come with a lot of advantages. But another reason people avoid healing is because they claim you don't win games by healing. You just enable your DPS to fight for you longer and whoever's DPS can do a better job will win. But I say you're just looking at it wrong. From the DPS perspective, it's easy to drop nukes of damage that delete people and feel like you did it without appreciating what your team did to help you achieve that kill. If you start to pay attention, you'll realize that healers aren't only literally more valuable by there being fewer players on the roll, but each action they take carries more weight on average than most moves the DPS can make, which is by design. It's to make one person healing the output of two or three people possible. But that's not to say that healing is harder at all, because although your actions may be more impactful to the game, your gameplay usually doesn't deviate far from a rhythm game. And ironically, it feels way more relaxing to do that than playing DPS for me. Because of this, I think if you put equal time into a damage and healer character, you would find much more control and victories on the healer. But these quote unquote easy victories can be high risk, high reward at times. Let me put it in perspective. If you're a DPS player and you misplay, maybe you didn't do your rotation properly, or you were in the right position at the right time, or you didn't trade the right CD. Usually this will only result in you doing a little less damage until you recover. Then you wait for CDs and DRs and set up the next go. But if you're a healer and you misplay, you get CC'd in a bad spot, you get locked at the wrong time, you traded the wrong CD, 
The match usually ends directly because of that mistake. The healer will save the DPS much more often than the DPS will save the healer, and that's just the nature of those roles. And that adds another dimension of complexity in each arena game that I had never experienced as a DPS before. My CDs, DRs, CCs, and positioning feel so much more rewarded and impactful to the outcome of the game. Albeit in a different way, and not as much as healers used to be able to impact the game in older metas. Yo, put on that Elwyn Forest type beat. I'm green, fuck you mean, I pull up to the scene Roll up gasoline, limousines, bad bitches beside me But I'm dumb as fuck, cannot heal, I'm too turned off the lean Even stone cold, do not care for damage, I'm a freak Hey, we get that? Cool. Cause I need a healer. But say that you don't want any of that. Even after learning that you are missing out on tons of free benefits that are fun and rewarding to experience that will directly enable you to progress further on your DPS mains, you still don't want to roll a healer for the betterment of yourself and the community around you. <laughs> well, no problem, because we still have option two. If you won't play healer, all you have to do is befriend one. You can play DPS all day long as long as you have a good team to queue with. And that's where I come in. I chose option one so you don't even have to think about it and can pick option two. Just join the Discord or the in-game PvP community with this invite link and this code respectively. We may be small in number, but together, we can build a better alternative to Solo Shuffle. If Blizzard won't fix solo queue times for DPS players, I'll just have to do it myself. Oh, don't worry. We can ignore that thing now. <laughs> Trying to put my game time where my mouth is, I've played to Cats Luos for about a week casually, and after watching one CDU tutorial, I have full bist with every enchantment and gem, and got to about 1800 in every bracket for fun without much struggle at all. That rating might even be higher if this video weren't so damn edit intensive. Most of the enchants were even paid for by randos and LFG, unprovoked, just to increase their win rate with the only healer they've been able to find in the last hour. This is a true statement that really did happen to me, however I highly recommend that you do not go around soliciting your DPS players to pay for your enchants as it will highly piss them off and most likely get you kicked out of the group immediately. I take no responsibility for any repercussions that may come about from you mimicking my actions. Your discretion advised, batteries not included, some parts sold separately. But you know, at the same time, I also feel like there will be plenty of you talking shit about how I picked a resto druid to demonstrate the point that healing is easy and how I may as well have done the same thing on a demon hunter to say that DPS is easy, even though you could literally play it with a set of DK bongos. Hmm. Actually. And you're kind of right about that. I've just never healed before, and somehow the one with like five different shapeshift forms that all change your bar seemed like the most beginner friendly to me at the time. It's been really fun to experience this side of the arena after over a decade of swearing it off, and I'll probably keep healing for most of my cues until the meta shifts. It's crazy to think about how much money I and probably other players too have spent just to play the game over the years, and yet we've barred ourselves off from experiencing so many sides of the content, like at one point choosing to be diehard horde or choosing to never roll a healer. I guess I gotta make up for last time. But what if my resto druid doesn't fit your comp? Well. I guess if 1800 wasn't so bad on Resto Druid, maybe I should try another healer? What the hell? Wait, getting the Resto Druid to 1800 took a week? How, how was fist weaving only two days? Okay, maybe that was a fluke. Huh. Three healers to 1800. Just like that. And the Shaman only took two days as well. Keep in mind, I have never healed before. This was starting to get actually crazy. I am climbing the ladder in the most deflated season in who knows how long more easily on healer than any DPS I've ever played. Maybe healing is just that easy? That's what I set out for when I started making this video, but I just wasn't expecting it to be so obvious. I guess it's time. Time for me to heal my way to my very first gladiator mount. That's right, my first gladiator mount. Because this video was clickbait. Was sourced mostly from actual gladiators whom I surveyed for the purpose of making a helpful video for the community. The truth is, I just wasn't able to hit gladiator in Dragonflight Season 1 for the Giga Chad Drake mount which will never be accessible again. That's what these videos showcase, and they're probably my least favorite videos on the channel, admittedly. Granted, that Gladiator push was my first ever threes push in a comp that I've never played, with players I've never met before, haven't spoken to since, and 
we only had the last two weeks of the season to push. Even with all those factors, we still managed to hit past 2000 CR. And that was a lot of fun. But it will never be enough for me to forgive myself for letting this one get away. That's why I've just up and decided that healing is easy. Look, I even made a handy little tier list for you since I know you WoW players make choices based off the flavor of the month instead of personal preferences. So if you want to help me get revenge on the system by claiming every Drake from this point forwards, you can join us in the push with these codes. Links in the description. I'll also be live on Twitch all day when this video goes live, so if you want to make my day, stop by and let me know what you thought of the video. Also, Twitch Prime. I don't care if you're a DPS player or a <laughs> sweaty or casual. I'm just trying to get some games in, and I feel like a lot of you are too. So I got enough tunes to fit your comp, whatever it might be. Trust me, maybe too many. And if you want to witness and possibly even face me climbing the ladder on a DK bongo controlled demon hunter, then let me know that in the comment section below. And while you're there, guys, please hit that like, subscribe, and bell icons because they really help me out a ton, and I really appreciate it.